All right, kids. In this video, what we're going to do is we are going to talk about finding the area of rectangles. You're going to have the same information on pages 216 and 217 of your book, but this video is going to be kind of an enrichment to what is presented in the Pearson series. Okay? So you'll want to take out your notebook and your math book and take notes as you watch this video. Okay, first thing that we want to do is we want to talk about what area is. Area is the amount of surface covered by a shape. Okay, it is two dimensional. There are two basic methods for determining the area of a rectangle. Okay, so the two basic methods are number one, the grid model, which is very good in problem solving for complicated problems. And the second method would be using the formula of length times width, okay? And remember, area, and if you want to find the area, it would equal the length times the width if you're talking about a rectangle, okay? And for many of us, that's not really new information, okay? Now, the other thing that you want to keep in mind is that when identifying area, you need to label it as square units. So in other words, if you have five square units, you would label it as five square inches. And this small two means that you are working with square inches. If you had 126 square centimeters, you would have cm to the second power. If you had 37 square yards, you would have 37 yards to the second power, or 37 square yards. Okay? So those are some basics for you. Now, here is an example situation. Viola wants to cover her door with wrapping paper for Christmas. Okay? Her door is three feet wide and seven feet high. How many square feet of wrapping paper will Viola need? Now, a couple interesting things in here that you might want to take note of is one, of course, the door being three feet wide and seven feet high. The other thing is that we're talking about area, so we're looking for square feet, okay? And so if we take this situation and we look at it through the grid model or method one, Okay, we would follow these steps. Number one, we would draw a grid slightly larger than you need. So in this case, we would look at our grid and we'd say, okay, we have a three by seven door, so I'm going to create a one, two, three, four, five by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine grid. Okay, that way I would have plenty of room to model my situation and come up with my square feet. Alright, so the next thing you do is you draw your door to the dimensions that you're given or to the correct dimension. So in this case it's three by seven. So I always like to start with this square right here and it's so I want to have a width of three so I'm going to come over one two three and put my dot there so that my first width is right there now it's a rectangle so I know my width will remain the same all the way down the length and my length of course is seven so I'm going to come down one two three four five six seven and put my dot and of course now I know that my length is seven units and my width is the three units so because a rectangle opposite sides are parallel opposite sides are congruent I can just draw in the rest of my sides okay and then you'll see that I have a rectangle so now all I have to do is count the squares to figure out the area so I have one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 square feet. Now notice that I'm calling them square feet because I've divided the area up into square units. Okay, and I have 21 square units. So I will record my measurement as 21 feet and identify it as square feet. So I would have 21 square feet of wrapping paper that I would need in order to cover the whole area of the door. Okay, and that would be the grid model. Okay, but you know, drawing out a grid and doing all of this is kind of cumbersome. So, what mathematicians have done is they've come up with a formula. So, let's take a look at using the formula method. All right, now let's take a look at using the formula method of finding area. Okay, so now we're going to talk about area being determined mathematically. Now, when you look at this formula, understand that area is a situation that can occur many different times in many different ways, okay, especially if it's a rectangle. And so mathematicians came up with this formula of length times width. So we put the A in front, that way if somebody says, hey, what's the area of that carpet? You can say, well, let me get the length, let me get the width, and multiply, and I will give you the area of that rectangular carpet. All right, so that's why we have a formula with area representing A in front of the equal sign and then the method for finding area mathematically. So anyways, here are the steps that you would follow, okay? So first of all, what you would do is you would measure the area you are working with in order to find the length and the width. Okay, so in this case, we have three feet by seven feet. So we have three feet by seven feet. All right, and what we want to do is we want to find our area. All right, so we put the measurements into the formula. So our formula, of course, is area will equal the three multiplied with the seven. Okay, and then we complete the math. So we simply know that 3 times 7 is going to equal 21. So we've completed the math, and now we record it as square units. So I would have 21 feet and squared. Okay? There we go. So that is how we would find area using the formula. Okay? So let's take a look at some other things that might occur when working with the area of a rectangle. Occasionally, you will get a situation such as this one, using the formula for area of a rectangle to determine an unknown measurement of a rectangle. So now we have an example. What is the length of the rectangle if the area is 105 square centimeters and the width is 7 centimeters? So here's what we know. We know the area of this rectangle is 105 centimeters, square centimeters, and we know that the width is 7 centimeters. What we don't know is the length of the rectangle from here to here. Okay? So in order to solve this problem, the first thing that we would do is we would set up an equation. So you set up your equation and then isolate the variable. All right, so in this case, we take our original formula of area equals length times width, and we simply plug in the known amounts. So what we do know is we know the area is 105 square centimeters. We know the width is 7. Okay, so we know the area and we know the width. And we know that in order to find the area, we multiply the length times the width and we'll get 105. So now what we want to do is we want to isolate the length. Okay, so what we will do is if we have multiplication in order to find this, we're going to use the inverse operation to get 
the variable alone. So in this case, we'll take 105, and we're going to divide it by 7, because we want to get rid of this 7 over here, and the only way we can do that is to divide the inverse of multiplying. So 7 divided by 7 will give us the L, or the length, by itself. But of course, we want to balance the equation. So 105 divided by 7 will give us 15. Now, what I always like to tell kids is, then what you need to do is you need to check to see if that really is going to work. In other words, you want to take and plug in what you found as a value of L, which is 15, and multiply it by what you know is the width, okay, which is going to be the 7. So what we're going to want to do is check our multiplication and see if we don't actually come up with an area of 105. So if I take 15 and I multiply by 7, I have 5 times 7 is 35, regroup the 3, 7 times 1 is 7, plus 3 is 10, and my answer is 105. So, that checks, okay? Now, to keep it even simpler, okay, this is really nice to look at, and it's really good math, and it's really what's happening, but, you know, the general rule of thumb is basically you divide the area by the known measurement. So, if you wanted to find this length, just take the area, and divide it by the width that you know. If you wanted to find the width, you could just divide the area by the length that you know. Okay? So that's a general rule of thumb, but this is mathematically what you are doing. You are isolating a variable to find out its value. Let's try some example problems now. These problems can be found in your book as well as on this video. Why don't you see if you can find the area of figures 1 and 2. Pause the video right now and come up with your answers. All right, let's look at the first situation. The first situation, we have a length of 15 and a width of 11. Now, it wouldn't matter. You might want to call this your length or this your width. It doesn't matter because of the, uh, of the commutative property. In, in multiplication. So in this case, if we were to take 11 and multiply it by 15, we would find the area. So we're going to just plug it into the formula of area equals the length times the width. Okay, so 1 times 15, the identity property gives us 15. Make sure you annex your 0 to hold your place values. Identity property, 1 times 15 is 15. Add our partial products. 5 plus 0 is 5. 1 plus 5 is 6. Bring down the 1. So in this scenario, we would get an area of 165 square centimeters. Make sure you label it correctly, okay? All right, let's take a look at the next example. Okay, the next example, they give you one of the lengths using a fractional amount. Now, you could either multiply this as 13 and a half mixed number times 4, or you could simply take 13 and do the logical thing and turn one half into a decimal, which makes it very easy to multiply the length times the width. Okay, so 4 times 5 is 20. Carrier 2, 4 times 3 is 12, plus 2 is 14. Carrier 1, 4 times 4, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Our decimal point comes out one place value, which means that we move it over one place value. So our answer is going to be 54 inches, and we want to make sure we identify those as square inches. And if we check our answer, we come up with the correct answer of 54 square inches. All right, let's take a look at another example problem. Okay. All right. See, uh, here's another example problem you might want to be You might want to practice. Try finding the missing length for this rectangle. 
All right, you can pause the video and do the math. Okay, now let's see what our answer is for the missing length. Now, in this case, they've set it up uh, algebraically in order to solve it. And our answer, the length, is 25 feet, okay? Because we didn't know what it is. So if we solve this by isolating the variable, what we do is we start with the area, and we take the formula, and we plug in the known amounts. We know the width, and we know the area, okay? So our area is 175 feet, our width is 7, and the unknown is the length. So the unknown is right here, and we want to isolate this by itself. In order to isolate the variable, we have to use the inverse operation of multiplication on both sides of the equation. So in this case, we would take 75 and divide it by 7, and we would take 7 and divide it by 7 over here. That would isolate the length, or L by itself, the variable by itself, and then we'd have to do the division over here, which is 175 divided by 7, which is 25. So then we've figured out that the value of one length is 25 feet. Okay, so that's how it would look if you did it as an algebraic equation and isolating the variable. Now, if you come over here, there, you know, and maybe some of you just simply did the division. You said to yourself, okay, I want to know what the value of L is. Well, if I want to find the area, I multiply this times that. So all I have to do is set up a division problem and do 175 divided by 7. So if I did that, 7 into 17, 2 times. 2 times 7 is 14. Subtract, I have a partial remainder of 3, bring down the 5. 7 into 35 will go a total of 5 times. 5 times 7 is 35. Check to be sure I terminate. And then I find out the unknown length is 25. And then, of course, what I'd want to do is I'd want to double check to make sure that 25 really is the value. So I would take 7 and I'd multiply it by 25 just to be sure that it equals 175. 7 times 5 is 35. Regroup the 3. 7 times 2 is 14 plus the 3 is 17. And so my answer checks for the area. Okay? So, so anyways, there are some uh, example problems and some information on finding the area of a rectangle. If you need further help, you can go to your book and look on pages two, 316 and 317. You can also use the Pearson, Pearson Realize videos to help. All right?